Today's video, we're going to be doing some more uh, limits practice problems. Today, we're going to be focusing specifically on limits at infinity. So let's dive right into it. All right, so here's our first examples. So the first one here, we have uh, x squared minus 10x plus 25 over x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5x. So the first thing we do with these kinds of questions is we like to divide by the highest power in the denominator. Right? So we're gonna, that's going to be x cubed, right? that's the highest power in the denominator. So we're going to divide everything in this expression by x cubed. Right? So what we'll have is we'll have the limit as x approaches infinity. We have x squared minus 10x plus 25. All that divided by, each of these terms divided by x cubed. And we do exactly the same thing in the denominator, right? So we'll have x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5x. Each of these we're going to divide by x cubed. So we'll have x cubed, x cubed, x cubed. Yeah. And now we can do some simplifications real quick, right? So two of those will cancel out with two of those. So we're just left with an x to the first in the denominator here, right? Because x squared, x cubed cancel out like that. One of these x's, this x to the first, is going to cancel out with one of these x's in x cubed. So we're left with x squared in the denominator there. This one isn't doesn't really do anything. x cubed and x cubed cancel perfectly, so we're just left with 1 over there. 5x squared, x cubed. x squared cancels out with two of the x's in x cubed. We're just left with an x to the first down there. x cancels out with one of the x's in x cubed. So we're just left with x squared in that denominator there. Okay. Now that we have all that, let's, let's put this all together and just uh, rewrite what we have down here. So we'll have the limit as x goes to infinity of up here we have 1 over x minus 10 over x squared uh, plus 25 over x cubed divided by 1 minus 5 over x plus 5 over x squared. Okay, and now we can go ahead and actually start taking our limit. Right? So whenever we have a constant divided by some increasing function, the limit's always going to be zero as x, x goes as x goes to infinity. Right? So that's going to be zero. 10 over x squared is going to be zero. 25 over x cubed as x goes to infinity is zero. The one stays as it is. 5 over x is that goes to 0, 5 over x squared goes to 0. And so what we're left with in the end is just going to be 0 over 1, which is simply 0. And that will be our final answer. All right, next question. So here we have a similar looking uh, rational function, but in this case, x goes to minus infinity. So uh, let's see what we can do. So the first thing we'll do once again is divide by the highest power in the denominator. In this case is also x cubed, so we're going to divide everything by x cubed, so we'll have the limit x goes to minus infinity of um, goes to the negative 1, which is 3x squared. Divide each of those by x cubed. And same thing in the denominator. So we have x to the minus 4, minus 3, oops, minus x cubed. And dividing each of those by x cubed. And now we can do some cancellations. So x to the negative 1 and x to the x cubed, really this x to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over x, right? So these two do simplify, but what we're going to be left with is just going to be 1 over x to the 4th. Effectively, that x to the negative 1st just simply drops into the denominator. Right? x squared cancels out with two of the x's in x cubed, so we're just left with an x to the 1st there. x to the 4th, um, well, three of these cancel out with the x cubed down here, so we're just left with an x to the 1st up in the numerator there. Once again, just like we had up here, x to the minus 4th is really the same thing as 1 over x to the 4th. So this entire thing is just really going to simplify down to uh, 1 over x to the 7th. 
because that x to the negative fourth just drops into the denominator. And lastly, these two things simplify, we're just left with one there. Okay, let's rewrite all this together. So we'll have the limit as x goes to minus infinity of, uh, we'll have one over x to the fourth minus three over x, minus three over x plus um, four x over one over x to the seventh minus one. Okay, and now we can take our limit. Once again, this guy is going to go to zero. This guy is going to go to zero. This guy is going to go to zero. Okay. Now, as we go to negative infinity, four x right is also going to go to negative infinity, right? Because four times a negative large negative number is still a very large negative number. So this thing right here is going to go to negative infinity. Okay. So our final answer will be negative infinity divided by negative one. It's not great notation there, but you get the picture. And here, notice that the negative signs are going to cancel, right? So the negative signs cancel. So all we're, all we're really left with is positive infinity, right? This, this limit here is going to go to positive infinity. Now, if someone were to ask you if this limit exists or not, this limit does not exist important that we make that distinction there it does not exist but exist but specifically it goes to minus infinity right because if a limit goes to infinity infinity is a concept not a number so it doesn't it doesn't exist because it doesn't really go to anything but specifically this function tends towards positive infinity so it does not exist but it's still you can be specific and identify that right so that's our first two problems all right next set of examples once again, exactly the same approach. So we're going to identify the highest power of the denominator, divide everything by that. Right? So in this case, it's going to be x to the ninth. So let's divide everything by x to the ninth. So we'll have the limit as x approaches minus infinity of 4x to the seventh minus 6x to the ninth minus 2x cubed. Dividing everything by x to the ninth. Okay. And same thing in the denominator as well. So we'll have x to the ninth minus x squared. Each of those dividing that by x to the ninth. Okay. And now we can do some uh, cancellations. x to the seventh cancels out with x to the ninth, so we're just left with an x squared in the denominator. Here we have an x to the ninth divided by x to the ninth. Those two things cancel out to one. x cubed divided by x to the ninth. Well, three of those cancel out with three of these, so we're left with x to the sixth in the in the denominator there. Down here, once again, x to the ninth and x to the ninth perfectly cancel out to one. And down here we have x squared minus x to x squared divided by x to the ninth. Uh, two of those cancel out with um, so those cancel out with two of these. So we're left with x to the seventh. In the denominator there. Okay, so now let's put all this together and take our limit. So now we'll have uh, 4 over, whoops, it is, got to carry my limit there. So we'll have the limit as x goes to minus infinity of, uh, what was that? It's going to be 4 over x squared right? minus 6 minus 2 over x to the sixth. All this divided by 1 minus 1 over x to the 7th. Okay? And now we're taking the limit as x goes to minus infinity of this guy here. This thing goes to 0. This thing goes to 0. That thing goes to 0. So all we're left with is minus 6 over 1. So we'll have minus 6 over 1, which is just going to be minus 6. And that's our final answer. Yeah. All right. All right. Next example here. So it looks a little bit trickier, but the fundamentals are still the same. All right. So we're going to divide everything by the highest power in the denominator. That's going to be x to the nine fourths. So what we're going to have is the limit as x goes to minus infinity of um, so we have x to the four x 
3 3 fourths minus 7x so 9 halves minus 2x 7 halves divide each of those by x to the 9 halves Okay, we provide each of those by x to the 9 halves, and same thing in the denominator as, as well, x to the 9 fourths. So we'll have um, cool, and now we can start canceling some things out. So, this first one here. Uh, let's do a little, since we have fractions of different denominators, let's do a little bit of simplification. So we know that 9 halves is the same thing as 18 fourths, right? So that makes life a little bit easier. So to cancel out x to the 3 fourths and x to the 18 fourths, well, this is just going to cancel out and we're going to be left with, uh, we're going to be left with 15 over 4, right? 18 minus 3, right? So that's that. Over here, they both these just cancel out cleanly, so we're just left with a, a 1 over there. Over here, we're left with x to the 7 halves over x to the 9 halves, so all of these cancel out, so we're left down here is x to the 2 halves, or 9, seven, nine minus 7, which is just the same thing as x to the 1st. Right? Down here, once again, we can take advantage of the fact that 9 halves is the same thing as 18 fourths, so what we're going to be left with is this will cancel out with uh, nine of these, so we're left with, we'll be left with uh, just nine fourths, x to the nine fourths in the denominator there. Right? These two will cancel out cleanly, just leaving us one, that thing doesn't change. So what we're going to end up with, if we put this all together, is we'll now have the limit as x goes to minus infinity of, we have four over x to the 15 fourths minus uh, we have minus 7 minus 2 over x all that divided by uh, 1 over x to the 9 fourths minus 1 plus 1 over x to the 9 halves right and now we can take our limit we can now evaluate our limit right so this is going to go to 0 that is going to go to 0, that is going to go to 0, that is going to go to 0. So our final answer is going to be minus 7 over minus 1, right? So this is going to be, maybe we'll come back up here for that. So it's going to be minus 7 over minus 1. Negative signs cancel, so we're just left with a positive 7 as our final answer. All right? All right, last set of examples here. And in this one, we're going to be looking at some exponential functions, right? So let's dive right into it. So the first step is still going to be the same. We're going to divide by the highest power in the denominator. In this case, it the word it doesn't quite translate as a power, but we see that 5 to the 3x is the biggest root of the denominator, so we'll divide everything by that. So we have the limit as x goes to infinity of, you'll have e to the 3x plus 1 over, that's going to be 5, 3x over 5 to the 3x, dividing this by 5 to the 3x plus 5, and we divide this as well by 5 to the 3x plus 5 to the 3x. Okay, okay, and now we can we can really we can really only make one cancellation here. That's going to be this guy here. It's going to go to one, right? and yeah, and we, we could maybe simplify this if we wanted to, but it doesn't really help us much. So let's go ahead and rewrite all this now. Okay, So we'll have the limit as x goes to infinity. So instead of writing this as e to the 3x over e over 5 to the 3x, I'm going to rewrite this as e over 5 to the 3x. I'm just going to bring out that exponent. right? So what I'm going to have is, in parentheses, e over 5 to the 3x okay, plus over 5 x 1 plus okay 
Beautiful. All right, and now we can go ahead and take our limit. So that's gonna go to zero. That's gonna go to zero. Now this one is a little bit more interesting. So the first thing we need to notice off the bat is that this base here of our exponential function, that's e over five, is less than one, right? Because this is less than one, we have what's called exponential decay, right? We have exponential decay, and the graph of that always looks like this, right? Whenever you have exponential decay, the graph is gonna look like this. It doesn't actually intersect with the x-axis, but it goes towards zero as x gets bigger and bigger. And that's what we're looking at, right? We're looking at what happens as x what happens as x goes to positive infinity, right? So if we follow this trend, this thing will also have to go to zero. Right? So that's so that's is going that's going to go to zero. All right, so now we've evaluated the limit, what we're gonna end up with is just zero over one, which is zero. Great. So that's problem five. For the last one, problem six here, notice that we've really got the same expression, but we're taking the limit as x goes to negative infinity, right? The reason I wanted to do that is because I want to show you that the way we treat the limit as x goes to negative infinity in exponential functions is very different from how we treat the limit as x goes to positive infinity. When we are dealing with polynomials, these two things are more or less interchangeable. It only makes minor differences to the final result. But when we're dealing with exponential functions, the limit as x goes to minus infinity actually has a very different process than the limit is exposed to positive infinity. Right? So I just wanted to hammer that in. Right? So, so notice up here we have two exponential functions. Right? e to the 3x, 5 to the 3x. Right? e is about 2.7, uh, so it is greater than 1. 5 is also obviously greater than 1. So the graphs of both of these are going to look something like this. Right? This is what we call exponential growth. Yeah? So that's, that would look something like this. Right? As x goes to infinity, it gets super, super big. But notice what happens as x goes to minus infinity. Right? For all these negative values of x, we're actually going down to zero. Right? We're, we're slowly approaching zero. Right? So therefore, as x goes to negative infinity, everything that represents exponential growth right, is going to go to zero. Right? So effectively, what we'll have is limit as x goes to negative infinity, if we just rewrote this down here, 3x plus 1. Yeah. If we take the limit of each of these terms, as x goes to minus infinity, e to the 3x is just going to go to 0. Likewise, 5 to the 3x is also going to go to 0, right? Because both of these represent exponential growth, which is highlighted up here. So as x goes to negative infinity on that, they go to 0. So what we're left with is just going to be one fifth. That's really our final answer. Right? So what I wanted to show you here in this, uh, this, these two examples here is how we treat exponential functions a little bit differently based on whether the limit is positive or negative infinity. Right? So be on the lookout for that as you work these problems in the future. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please do drop me a comment. I do read all those, so I would love, very much like to see what you, what you guys like. Right? Uh, but yeah, hope this was helpful. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!